Hello everyone, Professor Carefit here to talk to you about how to make a figure for Bio One. We're going to have several videos here. The first one will be how to make just the graph. Then we'll talk about how to add some information to that graph. And finally, the last video will be um, how to write a caption to make a complete figure. So if we go to the lab website, um, the first thing you want to do is download this data file here and you can do that by clicking on this pop out button and downloading the file and then you'll want to open Excel. If you don't have Excel, you can get it free from University IT. Just Google UCA IT and you should be able to uh, find a free download for Excel as well as PowerPoint and Microsoft Word. So here is the data. I've opened it in Excel. Notice we have minutes of jog jogging here, one through 10 minutes of jogging. That is our independent variable. And we have pulse rate, which is our dependent variable. Now, because both axes are numerical, so they're continuous data, that means we need to graph using uh, a line graph or scatter plot. Um, if the columns, if one of the um, axes were discrete data, um, such as pulse rate before and after jogging, so before and after instead of minutes, then you would have a column graph. So you always have to keep in mind, uh, the, you have to keep in mind what kind of graph should I be using here? And you should pick up on um, the rules that you need to apply so you know which kind of graph to use rather than um, having to contact an instructor every time you're presented with data. There's information on this in your lab manual as well. Okay, so let's figure out what we need to do to turn this into a graph. So first things first, we can see um, minutes of jogging here, pulse right here. See these um, R1, R2, R3 uh, uh, statements here? You might wonder what in the world does that mean? Well, um, what that is referring to is um, replication. So those are three different individuals. R stands for replication or replicate. Replicate one, two, and three. Um, so we did this three different times. So what we need to do here is turn this information into a figure. So what we'll want to do, and I'm going to do this just to make my life easier. I'm going to copy this column, minutes of jogging, and I'm going to paste it over here. That'll help me to graph more easily later. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the word average here. And what I need to do is I need to average these three replicates. So in Bio 1, we're never going to just graph all the data we collected. We average it first, and then we're going to put error bars on it. Okay, so we'll talk more about that in another video. But um, for the word, uh, or under the word average here, uh, we need to tell Excel to calculate an average. And the way to do that is first you start with an equal sign. Equals tells Excel that you're about to enter a formula. And you type in the word average after that. So you told Excel, hey, I want to do a formula. I want you to calculate an average for me. And you open an error bar, or I'm sorry, you open a parenthesis like this, uh, and you highlight with your mouse the three numbers that you want to average together. Simply close the parentheses then and hit enter. Let's do it again for the next number down. And I, by the way, I want you to do this along with me on your computer so you can see if you get the same kind of graph that I get. If you just watch and you don't do it yourself, then you won't get anything out of this exercise. Okay, equal sign, average, open parenthesis, highlight the three numbers, close a parenthesis, hit enter. Okay, now I'll give you a little secret here. If you have the same sample size for all of these values, which we do, uh, three samples were taken for each minute of jogging, what you can do is you can actually just copy your formula and paste it in all those uh, average cells down here. So what I mean by that, I'm going to hit control C. I'm going to click, first of all, I'm going to click right here on this number 103. I'm going to copy it by going to edit copy or hitting control C. What that does is it copies the formula. It doesn't actually copy the 103 average. It copies the formula. And I simply drag my mouse down and I hit control V for paste or edit paste and it copies the formula there that I typed and so it gives you the average um, 
heart rate for all of these different minutes of jogging. So this is the average pulse rate. And once again, that's in beats per minute. Okay. Now, what you'll see in the other videos um, is we're also going to calculate standard deviation and we're going to calculate standard error over here, um, which are also in beats per minute um, if you wanted to put a unit on them. But we're going to calculate those in another video just to keep this one short. Okay, so we need to make a graph now. Now, to do that, I want you to highlight the axis titles here and drag all the way down uh, highlighting all 10 of your um, minutes of, of jogging there all 10 values and then you're going to go up here to insert and you're going to insert and now you have all these options all these different kinds of charts what you want to do what we're going to use most of all in bio one except for a few exceptions possibly is this option here which is the scatter plot and there are several kinds of scatter plots and if you highlight over it it'll show you what they all look like um, i recommend you um, you pick one where the dots are connected with a line like that um, that that line is what you can think of as the trend of the data, sort of what the data was doing uh, uh, from beginning to end. It just helps you to visualize it if the dots are connected. You don't have to connect the dots unless your instructor tells you to. Um, this this video is just a general intro. If, you're, if your instructor gives you more specific instructions, be sure to follow those. All right, so here's our graph. Now, first things first, we need to do a few things to fix it. See this title right here, average pulse rate? You want to delete that. Click it and delete it. The other thing you'll want to do, um, at least if you're graphing for me, check with your instructors. I get rid of these grid lines usually. I click on them and I delete them. Now, um, the other thing we need to do is we need to label our axes titles. And if you're doing this on a Mac, a lot of the graphing tools will be up here in the menu. You'll have to click on the graph and then go up here to chart tools and uh, you'll have to insert the chart tools that way. Also, if you're using certain versions of uh, Excel on a Mac, you may notice that you can't find the chart tools. And if you can't find the chart tools, you're probably using an online version of Excel and you'll have to click a button to switch to the uh, version actually saved on your computer. So you, you may need to pay attention to that. Um, all right, so we're gonna click this little plus button here. And another thing I should point out while I'm doing this, if you have a Mac and you're having trouble graphing uh, or, you're, or you have a PC and you're having trouble graphing, something's not working right, um, all of the uh, campus computer lab computers have Excel uh, of the same version I'm using here. So you shouldn't have any trouble um, following along on uh, computers in the library or other computer labs. Okay, so let me just start that over now. I'm going to click on the graph. I'm going to click this plus button and I'm going to go to axis titles. Okay, now I can label my axes. Now to label an axis, we need to give it a title and a unit. So um, for this one, we will, we will call it um, this one is going to be a uh, pulse rate or heart rate. Let's just call it heart rate. I might have it called something slightly different in the other video, but that's okay. You don't have to, you, your, your graphs may come out with slightly different titles depending on what words you choose to use, but heart rate here. And then in parentheses, BPM for beats per minute. Those are my units. Okay. Down here I have my x-axis and I need to put a title on it and it will be um, I'm just gonna call this one uh, jogging time and I'm gonna put minutes in parentheses that's one way you could do that axis okay alright so then um, in the next video we're going to talk about putting on standard error bars and we're going to talk about putting in a line of best fit. You don't always use a line of best fit. It depends how linear your data is. If uh, so, well, or how linear your data are, perhaps to be more, more uh, precise. Um, if your data are pretty linear, pretty, pretty nice straight line, you put a line of best fit on. If the data goes up, levels off, 
maybe n not such a good uh, data set to use a linear best fit line. But your instructor will give you further information on that. But, but do bear in mind, if your data is not linear, um, then it's probably best to avoid the use of a best fit line, at least a linear best fit line.